This week I've been working mostly on crew progression, and I've spent a lot of time fleshing out design details. I'll be talking about the XP curve, perks, mission difficulty, and crew management UI. The XP curve was one surprisingly difficult area. As a general rule, each level up should take more experience than the last. I could copy the formula from an existing game, but I wanted to make sure I got the pacing right. That meant I needed to make some other decisions. For now, I'm targeting a playtime of about 10 hours, or an estimated 100 missions. I'm thinking crew should reach maximum level after about 90 missions on average. The benefit of leveling up is that crew gain perks such as additional actions or longer move range. As with weapons, I want perks to have meaningful variety. I might have a few upgrades to the same stat, but I don't want to flood the list with minor increments. For now, I'm thinking there will be about 20 to 40 perks, and I don't want any one crew member to get all of them. So tentatively, I'm setting the level cap around 10. So how do I distribute those levels over 90 missions? I started at the beginning. On average, I wanted crew to reach level 1 after the first mission, and level 2 after a couple more missions. That, and the goal of hitting level 10 after 90 missions, gives me 3 data points to fit a curve. I used Google Sheets to graph this with a polynomial trend line, and the results seemed reasonable. The longest gap between levels is 16 missions, which is pushing it a bit, but since the player will normally have multiple crew, I think we'll still see someone leveling up every few missions on average. But here's where it gets complicated. If every mission gave every crew member the same amount of XP, I could easily convert this to an XP curve, but missions should get harder and more rewarding over time. I also expect players to hire more crew over time. There are just too many variables here for me to grasp a methodical solution, so I did a lot of trial and error. I guessed at how many crew the player would have at each point, and what mission difficulties the player would be doing, and experimented with different XP curve formulae. For each XP curve, I tried to make a chart of experience for each mission difficulty that would fit, and in most cases it didn't. Either the number of missions between levels didn't fit the curve I established earlier, or I'd have to make more difficult missions give less experience. Once I finally had an XP curve and table of XP for each mission difficulty that worked, I approached things from the opposite direction. I wanted the XP from missions to follow a logical curve too, and that had to come from a combination of completion XP and XP from killing enemies. So I decided how many enemies there would be for each difficulty, and did more trial and error until I had curves that made sense and yielded average XP per mission fairly close to what I came up with to fit the XP curve. But it wasn't exact, so I ended up tweaking the XP curve some more, and ultimately tweaked the original progression of level ups over the game. Now crew would reach level 10 after, on average, 77 missions. I'm sure I could tweak this more to get closer to the original 90, but there are so many unknowns here that I doubt that 77 mission average will really be accurate, and have temporarily raised the level cap to 11 anyway. I think it's too early in development to try to nail this down precisely and expect a real game to play out that way. For now, this is close enough, and I'll revisit when I can actually playtest a realistic full run. Implementing this in the game was fairly straightforward. The only major change here is how XP is rewarded for attacking. Because units will eventually have shields that can recharge, it doesn't make sense to award a fixed amount per hit point. Instead, units remember how much damage has been dealt and by who, and award XP on death based on what percentage of the total damage each unit did, and whichever unit dealt the killing blow gets some extra. Now for one of the most fun parts, perks. I've brainstormed 24 perk ideas so far, and implemented the first 18. These grant extra actions, range, extra dodges, detection of enemies without line of sight, better aim, and more. To help test this, I've temporarily given the player some higher level crew to start, and added a panel where you can see details on each of your crew, including perk descriptions. Keep in mind, the UI will probably change before the game is finished. I also needed some more challenging enemies, so I finally implemented varying mission difficulty. Mission difficulty determines how many units you will face, of what level, how much XP everyone gets for completing it, and the payout. My last update for this week is the crew management screen. You can now dismiss and hire crew, but there's more to be done. The Paid Vacation button is meant as a way to reduce a crew member's stress by making them unavailable for one mission but paying them anyway. But that isn't implemented yet, partly because I haven't finalized how crew get paid yet. I originally planned on two types of crew, mercenaries that join for one mission and get paid a flat amount, and partners who stay with you but take a percentage of all income. Now I'm not sure that model makes sense. If partners are percentage-based, how do I make higher level ones more expensive to hire without becoming very unbalanced as your crew level up? I don't want the tedious maintenance of having to give your crew pay raises periodically, nor a morale system that incentivizes dismissing crew when they get unhappy about being underpaid. Figuring out the crew payment scheme will be my first priority for the next week, and I welcome any suggestions in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more of my game development journey, please consider subscribing.